Our gospel text for today is taken from the gospel of Luke chapter 2 verses 22 to 35 and narrates the incident of the presentation of the Lord in the temple. These verses make two points for us. The first is the fact of the presentation and the second is the prophecy of Simeon. The mother and father of Jesus obeyed the law. Their son was special. Their son was extraordinary, yet they did not stick to the speciality. They did not stick to the privileges which they could have asked for, but they followed the law exactly as any other parents would do. The presentation on the 40th day of a child was to be regarded as a gift to God. Everything that parents received, everything that people received was thought as coming from God and actually does come from God. So in a way, when I present it to God, I am acknowledging that whatever I receive has been received by me from the Lord and I am presenting it back to the Lord in a sign that I am detached from it. And that I want to acknowledge that I am dependent or attached only to God. So this is what the parents of Jesus do when they present their child back to God. But even as they present their child, they offer the gift of the poor. The gift of the rich would have been animals. The gift of the rich would have been sacrifice. But the offering which the parents of Jesus make are gifts which the poor would make. So an indication of the economic status of Jesus. That he came among the poor. He came among the marginalized. He came for the poor and marginalized and was one like them. And even as the presentation takes place, the second incident is that Simeon comes into the temple at that moment. Simeon is a prophet who is waiting for the salvation of Israel. And his waiting will not end until the salvation appears. And Simeon is blessed. He is blessed because the salvation does not appear in an event. The salvation appears in a person and not only a person now, but in a helpless child. And so Simeon comes into the temple, recognizes that salvation has come and so recognizes that his wait is over. And so he sings what is known as his Nunc Dimittis which is translated in English as now dismiss. So now I can go. So Lord, I have waited all these years and I've only waited to see salvation. Now, not only have I seen salvation, but I have experienced salvation in this child being presented. But even as he speaks about the child and what the child will be, he speaks to Mary, his mother, about a sword that will pierce the heart of Mary. Which means that her child, who is indeed the salvation of the world, will be rejected, will be spit upon, will be crucified and will die. Which mother? would want to hear this about her child. But this is what Mary had to hear because it would be the truth even though it was a prophecy. However, even as Simeon prophesied this sword, he also prophesied that the child will be the child who will enlighten the whole world to not only the manner in which he lived, not only the 
parables that he spoke, not only the miracles he performed, not only by his death, but by his rising from the dead. So in a way, even though there is the tragic element, there is without doubt the element of hope, the element of joy, and the element of God's 